to watch where the numbers come from. So down below here, as I start to write this out, I'm going to have, when I start summing these up, 141 from the table minus 200.2 from my first line in the orange squared divided by 200.2 plus I'm going to have 141 minus 200 all right so this is wrong because I I already wrote that one down, sorry, distraction. So the next one is 186, which was from the table, minus 225.3 squared divided by 225.3. And you can see this process is basically taking each piece and subtracting off what we already calculated for our counts. And then it's 224. minus 221.1 squared over 221.1 plus 211 minus 162.4 squared. And you can do this in your tables. There's a way to do this in your tables. And if you can't figure that out, come see me later and I can show you. Plus, the last one is 286 from the table again, minus what we calculated, 238.9 squared all over 238.9. Now when you get done, this is your chi-square value. So I get 48.2. This is equal to chi-square. This is called your test statistic. If you want your p-value, the probability this is going to occur, you would say that your p-value is equal to, and then the first thing that you write down is your chi-square statistic, which is 48.2, oh shoot, I should say, normal, or chi-square, the uh, chi-square CDF. So chi-square CDF, sorry, of 48.2 comma, 99 standard deviations, or however you want to think about it. And then how many degrees of freedom do we have? Um, no. 140. 140. No. Good, good guesses. It's four. Why? Because there's only five things in the table. So if there are five things in the table, your degrees of freedom are four. It's not the, the total number of people. It's how many different groups you had. Okay? When you find this, you find out that this thing is so small that it's roughly zero. I do too. I don't really know. I think the point is, you look at that and you go, okay, come on. Really? If the likelihood that this occurs is pretty much nothing, we know that their statement was ridiculous. So when we know that their statement is ridiculous, what we're going to say is, Pause. So I, I ran out of screen room, but here's what you're going to say. Our sampling distribution from 1,048 U.S. residents. Or one more extreme. The picture of that, what that means is up on the chalkboard. That means basically if you have a probability, you're going to the far side of the tail. So whatever you got, or something even more rare is what they're saying, would almost never occur. If H O was true. Since our p value is less than 0 0.05, which equals alpha, we reject HO. We reject the whole. 
<laughs> Damn, it's on video. <laughs> that is... <laughs> Aaron, stop saying that stuff. <laughs> that is, we have convincing evidence. I watch everybody goes home tonight and watches again just for fun. <laughs> that the age distribution of people who answer <laughs> landline telephone surveys. Bless you. Is not the same as the age distribution as the US. of all U.S. residents. Okay, last example for today. One night at the Tunisian Knights Casino, renowned gambler Jeremy Turner, aka the Missouri Master is having a fantastic night at the craps table. In two hours, he's racked up 30 grand in winnings and is showing no sign of stopping. Crowds are gathering around to watch the streak. The Missouri master is telling anyone with an earshot that his good luck is due to the fact that he's using the casino's lucky pair of, pair of dice, the bruisers, because one's black and one's blue. Unbeknownst to Turner, however, a casino statistician has been quietly watching the rolls and marking down the values of each roll, <gasps> noting the values of the black and blue dice, which is going to happen to Aaron's face if he doesn't knock it off. After 60 rolls, the statistician is convinced the blue die is loaded. <laughs> Take a look at the table. Yes. The table seems to be strong evidence the blue die was indeed loaded. There are more ones and sixes, and fewer than the other numbers, however, it's possible such differences occurred by chance. Is this result due to chance, or do we have statistical evidence that the stuff is loaded? How many sides are on a die? Six. 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 If I were to roll a die a total of 60 times, how many times should each face come up? Ten. So my expected values should be... 10 each time. Mm. Okay, so sometimes they don't tell you about the expected counts, but why go and multiply everything 1, 6, you know, times 60, 1, 6, 10. It's all 10. I mean, come on. So now we go through the process. As Aaron likes to say, HO is oh. that the distribution of outcomes on the blue die are, I guess I would say, equally likely or the same as a fair die. You could probably say it either way. So you want all those outcomes to be equally likely or it's the same, in other words, as a fair die. The alternative is the exact same statement with the word not in it. So the distribution of outcomes on the blue die are not equally likely or in other words, whatever we wrote in the parentheses. Okay, we will do a, and this time I'm gonna do the symbol because you guys wanted that last time, a chi-square goodness of fit test. Did they do, they didn't do it again, okay. With alpha equal to 0 0.05, again. We have a random sample of 60 rolls. And uh, for our large sample size, that's what they called it, our large sample 
It's funny they call it large because they say greater than or equal to 5. That's what we did before. Um, all of our counts, all expected counts are 10, which is greater than or equal to 5. So we're good there. And did I miss anything? Um, oh, independence. Independence. I guess we're not going to really say because we don't really know how many rolls there are. So you could say something about the number of rolls this person made, but I guess what I would say for independence instead is one roll of a die does not affect the next. And this is talking about independence. And so now we can find our chi-square. This is so we did the statement, we talked about the planning, and now comes the doing part. So we know that our chi-square is equal to the sum of all of our observed values minus our expected values squared all over our expected values. So as I start writing this out, um, from the table, we have 16 minus 10 squared all over 10 plus the next one was 5 minus 10 squared all over 10 plus the next total was 9 minus 10 squared all over 10 plus how many are 1, 2, 3, 7 minus 10 squared all over 10 um, plus Thank you. 6 minus 10 squared all over 10. And the last one? 17. 17 minus 10 squared all over 10. Again, this is giving us the chi-square. So notice how when I write it out, I write out chi-square, I rally up the formula, and then I do the formula, and I keep putting it equal so that the reader knows I'm continuing my train of thought. I get 13.6. So this is my chi-square statistic. To find my p-value, I know that my p-value is equal to the chi-square CDF of 13.6, comma, 99, comma, how many degrees of freedom? Five. Five. And that gives me a number that's uh, 0 0.018. Okay. Okay, so again, I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to read it off. It's going to be the same thing that we've done in the previous example. <clears throat> and I'm going to pause here so everybody can cut up on the math part, and then I'll read off the conclusion. Uh, Our sampling distribution. From 60 rolls of the blue dye. Or one more extreme, would only occur one point eight per cent of the time. If H O was true. Since our p-value of 0 0.018 is less than alpha of 0 0.05, we reject HO, the null hypothesis. You don't have to write the null hypothesis. That is. We have convincing evidence that the blue dye is loaded. Dun dun in the criminal justice system. 